Hi, I'm Fella Blythe. This video is gonna be a bit different, in which this video is not really, it's not gonna have like historical stuff in it, I guess. It's gonna be showing more about my actual practice, just showing various things that I've made that live on my altars. Also, the sun is like being really, really annoying right now. Usually I love it when the sun's streaming in this room because it makes good lighting, but right now it's just being a nightmare, like you can see, yep. So this over here, is my Athena altar. Some things that I have on here, I have an embroidery hoop because things like sewing and stuff, weaving it specifically, was sacred to Athena. Now at the time, the ancient Greeks, the way that their fashion worked, they weren't really, you know, they weren't sewing complex shapes like this. They were for the most part, really big yards of fabric that were not even sewn together, just like pinned with dress pins. Now they probably didn't have embroidery hoops, but this is a modern tool, obviously. So over here I have five. So I also have, these are old antique books. I collect antique books. Pretty much if anything's old enough, I will buy it. I even considered buying a tennis racket once. Yeah, so this one doesn't have a specific age on it, which means it's probably pretty old. If I do remember to do some Googling after this, handy literal translations, Heinz and Noble. So it's old enough before Barnes and Noble and Barnes and Noble is Heinz and Noble, which would be in this year over here. <laughs> Thanks, editing fell. So I keep a lot of my old books, uh, especially if they're classics related on her altar sort of syncretize this aspect of Minerva with her uh, education and knowledge. I have a candle here. Obviously this candle is well loved. <laughs> I've used it a lot. You actually will see it a lot burning in the background of my video. This is called Athena's Library by Soy Much Brighter. I actually got this starting in my first journey with Athena. There was a bunch of things that happened sort of back to back and one of them was receiving my little Athena necklace that I wear in every video, even if you don't see it, it's usually under my clothes as well as I saw someone selling these in the public market, the local market. I actually met the woman who makes these and I was like, oh wow, that is kind of <laughs> synchronicity. So I have a couple of wands on here. So one of these was actually a Christmas gift from my sister, this laurel wand here. Athena's discussed in the Odyssey as having a wand. A lot of deities like Hermes have wands as well. Now, likely these wands would have been more like staves than like what we think of as wands. So I don't actually really like use these that much like in a magical sense because I don't really do magic all that much, but I leave it on her altars to kind of get her blessing from it. So that way I most likely will move this to my Apollo altar. So this, for example, is being here right now because I am going to do a ritual later of calling in Athena's wisdom to bless this candle as Laurel is, I mean, Laurel is sacred to like everybody, but Laurel is also sacred to Athena and wands are associated with Athena before I then put this on my Apollo altar to have him bless it and have it used in, in workings with him. So I sometimes will transfer things from altar to altar, especially if, I don't know, I want to involve more than one God. And the other wand on here was the, my universal Harry Potter wand. <laughs> this was my original wand that I used before I got this wand in Christmas time. So this here, I haven't talked about this on my YouTube channel. I have in Test Tubes and Cauldrons, which will be over here. I'll link it over here. I live in a house that was <laughs> built by Greek people and they left a lot of their stuff here. It was specifically built by two yayas and they had a very choice decoration and artifacts that they sort of left here to be admired and used by the tenants that live here. And naturally I put my Athena altar on top of a bookshelf, pretty much any aspect of, of bookshelf actually <laughs> I will use as an altar, but it felt right to use this one. This one is actually a bookshelf made by my grandma. It's been in my family for many, many, many years. And I just thought it was right to use something that it's such a, such a familiarity in my family to, to have a, a deity who's associated with wisdom and education be on top of it. I also have any sort of oracle cards here, or at least if they don't live here, they're blessed here. Like I have a literary witch's oracle, which a friend gave to me that was blessed here. And then I also leave it here. Not because I believe that Athena is going to imbue it with her energy, but I will call in Athena and do a blessing. This over here is some rum. I'm not going to bring that forward because YouTube sometimes gets mad at you. That I use for libations, sort of a UPG I have with Athena. I don't really know how to explain it. <laughs> so this here 
This is a loom. Athena, again, Ergane, associated with weaving. I will use this sometimes as a way to meditate with her. Sometimes chant little prayers to her as I weave in and out. It's also just a nice activity to do by her altar as well. Okay, so this over here is my like working altar TM. I don't have altars to all of my deities and I'm not going to show you all of them. I have one to Aphrodite, Athena, Hermes, ancestors in general, chthonic beings. I have an outdoor altar to Demeter, which is currently closed because it's winter time and I tend not to live there. I also have an altar to Artemis that I will show you and also Apollo and Hiking does. But we're coming here first. This is my main altar space. I show this in my altar shrines and sacred spaces video, which will be linked right over here. I have altar, this is where like my main like libations and offering stuff goes just so it's easy access and then altar storage is down here. I have a bunch of candles. It's mostly candles down here actually and some things that I use for festivals that are not year round. Okay, well you cut off my face but you can at least see this a little better. So I have these two candles here. I think I showed these in my altar shrine since I could save this video, but these are two pillars. I might paint them pearl at some point because right now they were painted pink when I got them, but I use this to sort of represent the gates of Mount Olympus. So especially when I'm calling in an Olympian deity, I will light these two things. And then I have this camp candle called Mountain View, which I also used to signify the hearth fire of Mount Olympus. So what I will often do is light my Hestia candle or light this candle in front of Hestia. Hestia recently got her own full altar, which I promised to her. Might show that, might not because it requires a lot of moving around. This was set up for rituals. I, I did fairly often. I'm not going to talk about them because they're private, but I have different aspects of all of the main deities that I interact with. So over here, I have this little plate and I will come show you. So this plate came from a museum. I use this in my representation for Apollo. And then this one is it's just a little bracelet that I thrifted and I use it to represent Aphrodite. Then over here, I have this. This is a little owl that I use to represent Athena. I don't actually, I only have, I can stand more in this corner. I only have three statues to gods and one of them I made myself and one of them is Hestia, one of them is Demeter, the other one is Apollo, which is the one I made myself, which I will not be showing you because it's a statue of a male Greek deity, so YouTube will flag me. So I use oftentimes little things that I make or find. Again, I found this, I probably thrifted it or I took it from my house somewhere. <laughs> this I've shown before. So this one I showed in my all about offerings video. It's a little helmet I made to Hermes. So this usually lives in my Hermes altar, but I used it then when representations of all gods. This is literally just hand sanitizer. I don't have a, like I have a plant representation of Asclepius. It's my aloe vera. That was a little bit too big to put on this altar. I felt that it would kind of overshadow everybody else and I felt kind of weird overshadowing everybody. So I literally just have hand sanitizer. Um, yeah, obviously I know I have like a lot of stuff and I don't want you to feel like you have to have a lot of stuff. I literally didn't have a permanent home when I started being a Hellenic polytheist and this stuff is all within the past, I would say 2020, maybe even the past less than a year almost. And most of it is thrifted. Some of it was votive offerings like certain candles. I promised to deities to buy them. Uh, the statue of Demeter specifically is probably the most expensive thing I have. It's not even that expensive, probably like $40. You don't have to, you can literally just like, I don't know, represent God via hand sanitizer. And then I have this candle, since I also don't have a representation of Artemis. This is called Summer Storm. I actually associate, part of my UPG is associating specifically Artemis with Summer Storm, so I bought this for her to both as an offering and also represent her. That's everything that's on this altar. I'm not gonna get into everything that's below because literally most of this is stuff like random tea lights, candles, etc, etc. Now we're gonna look at Artemis. This is going to be the weirdest part to film. I don't think I should see all angles in the room today. Probably doesn't, oh god, as I fall and die. I feel like Vanna White, except wearing a Victorian waistcoat. This is my Artemis altar. I've used on my altar shrines and sacred spaces video. I talk about, I like cosplay. And so sometimes I have cosplay prints that feel like they, I don't know, I don't know, I associate with a certain deity. So this is, I'm gonna, 
I'm really putting myself on the map here. Please keep comments to, um, about my content <laughs> and not the cosplay content. This is a representation of Yasha and Flowers from Critical Role. Not gonna get into all of that, but that's what this picture is of. These are called Sweet Gum Seed Balls, it is a hardwood plant and is also very, very spiky. So I associate these with protection and I'll use these in little folk magic y charms. And I also associate Artemis with urban foraging or foraging in general. So whenever I forage something like sweet gum seed balls, I will ask her to bless them before I use them in something. And then this right here is a little scent diffuser. I don't exactly know what it's called. Basically a scented oil. This is called Wild Fig. I bought this in a local shop and I associate Artemis again with wildness urban wilds, and figs are also a very common plant symbol in, in ancient Greece, so it just felt appropriate. It's hard to describe a lot of these UPG things come from, you just see something and you just, you just know. You're like, this is for Artemis, so yeah, that's Artemis. Where do I take you now? Up and away! I'm so sorry that these are so dark. I just can't bring my ring light over here. Anyway, welcome. Welcome to Hermes Altar. So I have here a little candle. This is from Mythology Candles from their Lord of the Rings collection. It's called Wizard's Pipeweed. This, if you will recognize from my Hermes video, this was my, or is my travel altar to Hermes. I have bay leaves in here, coins, and a symbol of mercury and gold on the bottom. Sort of a syncretized mercury. Eventually I'm gonna paint this outside because you actually can't take these on planes the strike anywhere, which kind of makes it a little bit inconvenient. I want to bring Hermes with me while I'm trying on planes, which I would love to because I hate flying a lot. Or I hate the process of flying. Once I'm in the plane, I'm fine. But anyway, I might actually replace this box and make a new one because, yeah, these matches, you can't take them on planes. This is something from my D&D group that one of the members sent me as a Christmas gift. It's an amethyst crystal. It's like a fun little lore thing. I'm not going to bore you with that. But again, I associate him with D&D. Here's dice. I recently went to a museum where they had little dice offerings and little dice divination, which funny little things on it. So dice have long been associated with gods, especially Hermes. Hermes is known as he does divination by dice. So that's also why I kind of UBG with him with d, d I usually have my dice like on this altar, but I recently used them, so I haven't put them back yet. That's my Hermes altar. Okay. Now I'm just gonna stand here like a professor, I guess. I'm actually gonna show- I'm not gonna show you my ancestor altar, partly because the lighting's bad. And also, I don't know, I feel weird filming it, but I will show you some of the stuff that's on there. So this here is a little wand. I didn't actually make it, I found it like this in one of the little parks by me. Kind of think someone else carved it and they left it there because there's little markings and stuff on it. Don't worry, I cleanse it, bless it, protect it, whatever, whatever. This here is some river sediment from and river rocks. This is from my hometown. Very special to me, very special to keep it with me, even though I live in a completely different place now. It just felt right to have, there's so much cat hair on this. <laughs> it felt so right to have something that was representative of the nature that raised me. These are a series of books about wildflowers, wildflowers, and trees of North America. While I wish I had books that were more specific, I still felt right to keep it on here because stuff that, you know, these, these were books that were passed down to me. So these were from my ancestors. So I just felt right keeping them on my altar, even though they're old, probably a little bit outdated and um, aren't super specific, but they felt right to keep on an ancestor and nature altar. I think that's all I'm gonna have to, to show for you today. Let me know how you liked these kinds of videos, if you like these more informal ones to show my actual praxis, altars, etc. I don't usually show my altars, there are certain ones like my big working altar, my Hermes altar, and my Athena altar. I mean my Athena altar is in the background of every video, so I feel like showing you that as well as this. It's kind of fun. Uh, I've noticed when I edit my videos, you can see certain rituals that I've done or, or see remnants of them when this altar specifically will change a lot of my backgrounds. That's kind of fun. If you watch my videos and look at this, you'll you'll see it change. This one also too you can probably see when I got it revamped. Anyway, I've been trying to film 
certain videos are way in advance. Also, again, caveat, don't think that you have to have 40 million altars <laughs> and so much stuff on your altar. I started off with no altars. I started off with an altar in a shoebox. Uh, next time I'm at my parents' house, I'll have to show my, my OG hidden altar. Yeah, this is just because I've been living on my own for really my sixth year. My sixth year, like, completely living on my own. Thank you all for watching this video. You also kind of got a weird room tour. My room's not exciting. It's just a desk, a bed, and a hundred altars. So I guess maybe more exciting than the average person's room. From the past to the future, I'll see you next week with my Hellenistic video, which is just so weird for me to say because... I literally haven't even started researching yet at this point, or outlined. But anyway, it's called uh, proactivity, which is something I'm getting used to so I don't ever run into the problem of feeling stressed out. It's been nice. With that, I will see you all, not next week, in two weeks, and I look forward to it. Bye, everybody. <laughs>